Hello and welcome to this video on generating functions for integer partitions. We will start today by talking about the generating function for paying with pocket change, namely pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. This is an example that we've seen in class together, and it uses the product principle for generating functions. Then we will see how to generalize this example to get a generating function for integer partitions. Here is our motivating example for today. What is the generating function for paying n cents using pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters? We will break this problem into four subproblems and find the generating function for each of them. If we want to pay n cents in pennies, then we can always do this, and there is one way to do so for every possible size n. And note that we can pay zero cents with pennies because there is one way to do nothing. Therefore, the generating function p of x for paying with pennies is 1 plus x plus x squared, plus x cubed, and so on. And this is just the geometric series, which equals 1 over 1 minus x. What if we want to pay in nickels? Now we can only succeed when n is a multiple of 5. So there is one way to do this for n is equal to 0, 5, 10, 15, and so on. Meanwhile, there are zero ways to do this for all other values of n. Therefore, the generating function n of x for paying with nickels is 1 plus x to the fifth plus x to the 10th, plus x to the 15th, and so on. And this is a geometric series where we use x to the 5th in place of x. And this is equal to 1 over 1 minus x to the 5th. By a similar argument, the dime generating function is 1 over 1 minus x to the 10th, and the quarter generating function is q of x is equal to 1 over 1 minus x to the 25th. So now we have all of our component functions, and we are ready for the product principle. We are going to construct the generating function for paying with any of these four kinds of coins. The product principle for generating functions tells us that we obtain our desired generating function by multiplying these four component functions. I will state this product principle later in the video. For now, let's just use it to solve our problem. By the product principle, the generating function for playing with pocket change is just the product of p of x times n of x times d of x times q of x. In other words, it's 1 over 1 minus x times 1 over 1 minus x to the 5th times 1 over 1 minus x to the 10th times 1 over 1 minus x to the 25th. So we've arrived at our final answer for paying with pocket change. And if we want to find actual values for various n, then we need to expand the power series for this composite function. The coefficient of x to the n is the number of ways to pay n cents using pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. For example, there were four ways to pay 14 cents. We can pay with 14 pennies. We can pay with a nickel and nine pennies. We can pay with two nickels and four pennies. Or we can pay with a dime and four pennies. And we can see that the coefficient of the x to the 14th term is, in fact, four. Now we are going to generalize this process to find the generating function for integer partitions of n. We will revisit the ideas featured in the previous example and I will give a formal statement of the product principle for generating functions. Let's begin. An integer partition of the integer n is a multi-set of positive numbers whose sum is n. And we can also view an integer partition as an array of boxes where the sizes of the rows are non-increasing. These are called Ferrer's diagrams, and this picture displays all of the Ferrer's diagrams for the integer partitions for n between 1 and 8. We will show that the generating function for integer partitions of n is given by the following infinite product. We multiply 1 over 1 minus x to the k for every positive integer k. Now this may seem like a crazy answer. Multiplying an infinite number of functions seems pretty unwieldy. But on the other hand, it is actually a pretty simple function. I think it's very cute. And in fact, we will see how to deal with the infinite product in a very straightforward way. So it turns out that it isn't that difficult of a function to deal with. So let's prove that this is the generating function for integer partitions. We use p of n to denote the number of integer partitions of the integer n. And I want to start by reminding you that there is one integer partition of the number 0, namely the empty set. This is another example of the there is one way to do nothing phenomenon. And finally, our integer partition generating function will show you why embracing this one way to do nothing phenomenon leads to nice counting formulas. 
Suppose that I asked you to come up with an integer partition of 12. Your process would probably look something like pick a part of size 4 and then keep going. Maybe you'll pick a part of size 3 and then another part of size 3. And finally, you'd finish it off by picking a part of size 2 because this would get you to 12. In other words, you pick a sequence of integers and you probably pick your largest number first. You'd keep track of their sum and make sure that you don't go above your target number. We will follow a different procedure when we create the generating function for integer partitions. We will fix our target number n, and then we will ask an infinite series of questions. How many parts of size 1 are there? How many parts of size 2 are there? How many parts of size 3 are there? And so on. And note that most of our answers, in fact all but a finite number of them, will be 0. Let's focus on our first question. How many parts of size 1 are there? It is also the generating function for integer partitions into parts of size 1. And you'll also recognize that it is the generating function for paying n cents using pennies. All of the coefficients of this generating function are 1, because there is one way to partition a number into the sum of 1s. So the generating function for partitioning an integer n into parts of size 1 is 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed and so on, and that is just 1 over 1 minus x. Now let's look at the generating function for choosing parts of size 2. There is exactly one way to partition any even number into a sum of 2s, and there are zero ways to partition an odd number into a sum of 2s. So the parts of size 2 generating function is 1 plus x squared plus x to the fourth plus x to the sixth and so on, and we get this infinite sum which converges to 1 over 1 minus x squared. We get a similar generating function for any integer k. There is one way to write any multiple of k as the sum of k's, and there are zero ways to write any non-multiple of k as a sum of k's. So the parts of size k generating function is 1 plus x to the k plus x to the 2k plus x to the 3k and so on, and this infinite sum converges to 1 over 1 minus x to the k. This is where we need the product principle for generating functions. And here's our formal statement of that theorem. Let's consider a two-phase process called C. In this process, we pick an integer, k, between 0 and n, and then split the set of n things into intervals. There's the first interval, which goes from 1 to k, and the second interval, which goes from k plus 1 up to n. We perform task A on the first interval, and then perform task B on the second interval. We'll let a of x be the generating function for task a, and b of x be the generating function for task b. Then the result of this theorem is that the generating function for this composite task, c, is the product of a and b. So repeatedly using this product principle for generating functions, we find that the generating function for integer partitions is the product of 1 over 1 minus x to the k for k greater than or equal to 1. This is because we need to multiply the parts of size 1 generating function times the parts of size 2 generating function times the parts of size 3 generating function and so on. Now let's talk about this infinite product. It does seem pretty weird. How can I multiply an infinite number of rational functions? Also, I believe that the product principle works for a finite product. That's a simple induction proof. But can I use induction an infinite number of times? These are good questions. So for now, let's just view this as a formal expression which means that we won't try to evaluate it or use it in calculations. It's more of an idea. Instead, we will get around this infinity issue by noticing that if we want to calculate all the integer partitions of n, then we can stop at index n and use the function qn of x, which is just the product as k goes from 1 to n of 1 over 1 minus x to the k. This is because when we partition the integer n, none of our parts can be bigger than size n. And so we can look at this particular generating function qn of x and look at the coefficient of the x to the n term to find the number of integer partitions of n. Moreover, we can use this family of q sub n functions to recursively find all of the integer partitions of any integer n that we desire. Just take the product of the first n rational functions of the form 1 over 1 minus x to the k and look at the coefficient of the x to the n term. This brings us to our u-try problem. And this time I have two questions for you. Question number one is what types of integer partitions are counted by the generating function qn of x? I want you to describe these integer partitions in words. 
for question number two, I want you to explain why the generating function for integer partitions of n into distinct parts is given by the infinite product d of x is equal to the product of 1 plus x to the k, where k goes from 1 to infinity. All right, good luck and have fun.